Hello everyone, this is Allie from KidZoo, and today I'm going to read to you, Is This Panama? It's a story about one bird's migration. Is This Panama? A Migration Story by Jan Thornhill, illustrated by Soyan Kim. Here we have some illustrations of different kinds of warblers. Is this Panama? When Sammy, the young Wilson's warbler, woke up, his toes were colder than they'd ever been before. Even though it was still August, frost twinkled and sparkled on every leaf of his home near the Arctic Circle. Sammy shivered, partly because he was cold and partly because he was excited. If it was this cold, it must be time for him to make his first migration south to Panama. Sammy had heard about Panama from older Wilson's warblers. They said that Panama was warm all year long, even at night. Sammy had also heard that some insects in Panama were as big as warblers. He wasn't sure if he believed that though. But where were all the other warblers? Usually there was somebody foraging for food nearby. Sammy hopped up to the top of the tallest dwarf birch, expecting to see someone he knew, but there was no one. Sammy was worried. He didn't know how to get to Panama by himself. Sammy spotted a ptarmigan. All summer the ptarmigans had been hard to see because their brown feathers blended in so well with the landscape. Lately though, their brown feathers were being replaced by white ones. Have you seen any warblers? Sammy trilled. Nope, clucked the ptarmigan. I bet they've flown south. Warblers always fly south. Is that what you do? Asked Sammy. Don't have to, said the ptarmigan. There's lots of food for me here, and I grow special feathers for winter. Soon I'll be almost completely white. Everybody will be able to see you, said Sammy. Won't that be dangerous? Silly Sammy, chuckled the ptarmigan. I'll be almost invisible once the snow comes. But you, Sammy, you better start flying south. Sammy flew higher and longer than he'd ever flown before. He flew for a whole hour and he was getting tired. A caribou was grazing below. Sammy dipped down close. Is this Panama? He asked. I'm supposed to migrate south to Panama. I'm going south, the caribou snorted loudly, because caribou always snort loudly. But I've never heard of Panama. I'm heading to my winter forest. Why don't you just stay here? It's very windy out in the open. The snow gets hard and crusty. In the forest, the snow is softer, so it's easier for me to use my hooves to scoop it off the lichens I like to eat. I don't like lichens, said Sammy. I like insects. Then you better keep going. I haven't seen any insects at all today. Sammy had been flying for several hours when he heard a strange trumpeting noise. A flock of sandhill cranes was passing high above him. The birds were fast, and Sammy had to flap his wings like crazy to catch up. Are you going to Panama? He asked breathlessly. Never heard of it, drawled one of the cranes. We're migrating south to Texas. Another crane noticed that Sammy was tired. Hop on, he said. Thanks, said Sammy, landing on the big bird's hunched back. How do you know how to get to Texas? We look for landmarks, special places we recognize along the way. See down there? We look for that pond every year. For the next few days, Sammy hitched rides with the cranes and spent the nights with them in marshes, where the gangly birds used their long beaks to probe the mud for roots and worms. But Sammy couldn't see well enough in the dark to find insects to eat, so he said goodbye and continued on his own. The next time he stopped to rest, Sammy spotted a creature who seemed to be just a head attached to a very long striped tail. Hello, Sammy trilled. Do you know where Panama is? No idea, hissed the garter snake. I don't get around much. No legs, as you can see. But don't you migrate? You have no feathers or fur to keep you warm. I do migrate, said the snake. I follow the scent of other snakes to an underground cave where hundreds of us sleep away the winter together. 
There are no snakes where I come from, said Sammy. Too cold, probably, hissed the snake. We like places that have hot summers and lots of frogs and earthworms and... You eat frogs and earthworms? asked Sammy. Oh, yes. And guess what else I sometimes eat? Sammy had an idea what the answer might be, so he flew off quickly, wondering if he could smell his way to Panama. Near a huge lake, Sammy was suddenly surrounded by hundreds of green darner dragonflies, all flying eastward. Are you migrating? Sammy asked. We surely are, a darner answered. She didn't seem to be looking at Sammy, though it was hard to tell because of her strange insect eyes. Where are you migrating to? asked Sammy. Far enough south that we won't freeze. Then why are you flying east? We're following the shoreline. It could be dangerously windy over the open water. Sammy could fly faster than the dragonflies, so off he went ahead of them. Sammy followed the lake's shoreline for two days. At sunset on the third day, he swooped down into a great forest. Flittering and chipping among the highest branches was a flock of Sammy's warbler cousins. Sammy was thrilled. He was sure he'd made it to Panama. Is this Panama? he asked. Don't I wish, twittered a red start. But no, we're nowhere near Panama. Sammy was disappointed, but then he brightened. Can you show me the way? Sure, we're about to take off. But it's almost dark, cried Sammy. Warblers do migrate at night, you know, said a black Bernian warbler. We follow the stars. The stars, said Sammy, astonished. Of course, we look for patterns that match the star maps we have in our heads. When it feels just right, we fly. Sammy stared up at the darkening sky. One group of twinkling stars made him feel all quivery inside. I think I feel it, he sang, and off he flew with the other warblers. A couple of nights later, Sammy was surprised to see stars glittering below him. Those aren't real stars, a black-throated green warned. Just try to ignore them. But a few minutes later, stars were absolutely everywhere. Sammy didn't know which way to fly. He was so confused, he became separated from the flock. Sammy was becoming frantic when he saw another Wilson's warbler. Maybe it was someone who could help him. They were almost close enough to touch beaks when, bonk, Sammy smacked into something hard and flat and invisible. Stunned, he twirled down to the ground. Sammy was lucky. He wasn't badly hurt when he hit the window and was able to fly away from the buildings to a meadow. Exhausted, he fell asleep. Sammy woke up surrounded by hundreds of fluttering orange and black wings. Is this a butterfly party? He asked. Oh no, one of the monarchs answered. We just stopped to rest on our way south to Mexico. Is Mexico close to Panama? Sammy asked. Pretty close, said the butterfly, but I think Panama's farther. As the morning sun took away the night chill, the air began to move. This was what the monarchs were waiting for. One by one, they took flight, swirling higher and higher on a warm updraft. Sammy followed. As the day wore on, Sammy and the butterflies found themselves surrounded by ominous, towering clouds. The wind turned wild, scattering everyone in all directions. Pummeled by rain, Sammy landed alone on a beach where he waited for the storm to end. At the water's edge, a long-legged bird was rearranging his wet feathers with his long beak. Pah, he muttered. Grounded, me, unbelievable. I was grounded too, Sammy piped in. No kidding, grumbled the bird. But everybody knows Hudsonian godwits like me fly all the way to Patagonia in one go, no stopovers. Is Patagonia near Panama? asked Sammy. Just twice as far as all. The godwitch stretched out his wings. Sammy followed the bigger bird out over open water. Soon, there was only a vast expanse of ocean far below. For two days and two nights, Sammy struggled to keep up. His wings had never been so sore, and he was out of breath. Got to rest, he panted. Not me, said the godwit. No more stopovers. But there's a tiny island way down there. Phew, said Sammy, and down he went. Just as Sammy landed, 
A geyser of water blew out of a gaping hole in the middle of the island. The water came down like rain, drenching Sammy. Then the island started to move. Sammy ran uphill as fast as he could so he wouldn't fall into the ocean. And then he saw the eye. The eye was almost as big as Sammy. The island introduced herself as a humpback whale. She was migrating south to warmer waters to calve. But what are you doing way out the here? The whale asked. Her voice was much deeper and slower than Sammy's, so she was a little hard to understand. I'm migrating to Panama. You're a tad off course, said the whale, trying to be kind. But I could get you a bit closer. Humpbacks can swim very fast when they want to, but Sammy's new friend was so busy chatting with other migrating whales that in a whole day they barely got anywhere. Sammy wanted to move faster, and he was hungry. The whales pointed him in the right direction, and off he flew. Sammy Island hopped through the Bahamas before landing in Cuba, where he joined up with a mixed flock of migrating birds. After a few days, the group crossed over the water to Mexico. They followed the coastline southward, stopping to forage near Mayan ruins, in fields of maize, and in monkey-filled rainforests. Eventually, they stopped to look for food near a river. Sammy had been migrating for almost three weeks. He was so tired he didn't even notice a juicy caterpillar walking right over his foot. He was so tired he didn't care if he ever got to Panama. He let out a big sigh. Well, as big a sigh as a tiny bird like Sammy can make. That's when he noticed something pe peculiar about the thicket. Sammy suddenly felt all quivery inside. And then he understood. He wouldn't have to ask anyone where he was anymore, because he knew where he was. Sammy was in Panama. He'd made it to his winter home. The end. Here we see a map of Sammy's migration from way up north down to Panama. And it also shows us the different animals he meets along the way and some information about them. And now there's more information about how animals migrate, including the dangers of migration, such as the window that Sammy flew into. Thanks for joining us today. Bye.